And tamales are pretty traditional during Christmas time for, you know, Mexicans. So here in LA, people even who aren't Mexican seem to have that in their family traditions also. My wife uh, grew up in Eagle Rock, she's not Mexican. So for their Christmases, they've had, they have tamales also. My name is Wesley Avila. I'm the chef owner of Guerrilla Tacos here in Los Angeles. And today we're gonna do some tamales, home style, casero style in my house. With the tamal, first we're gonna have the masa, which is right here, it's mis tamal. So this is basically, you know, hominy and corn that's been ground. And then we got the husks right here that have been soaking for about 45 minutes in really hot water. So they get them nice and soft and pliable. For the filling, we have the squash. We have uh, tomatillos, tomatoes, pasilla chile, guajillo some bay leaves, sesame seed, allspice, and pumpkin seeds, and that's gonna be for the sauce. So we're gonna cut this bad boy, and I'm gonna use a microwave to cook it. This one I would cut into about this big. So this is a technique that they actually showed me when I was in France, which I was kinda like baffled when I saw how fast it was. And this basically cooks it without any flavors. Like, you don't have to roast it with butter or salt or thyme or anything, because I, what I want is basically squash flavor with cheese and the sauce. Yeah, the reason I cook the, the squash in the microwave is because I find it easiest. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about peeling it and cutting and portioning it, heating up your whole kitchen with the oven. A lot of people, a lot of chefs I know hate on microwave, they say, well, you'll never see a fucking microwave in my kitchen. And I don't, I don't see the point of that. If you're, if it's a tool, why not use it? So this one I'm gonna put in there about 15 minutes to 20, depending how big it is, but these are kind of smaller that I cut. 15 minutes on high. While that's nuking, we're gonna start the sauce. So first of all, we're gonna wash these tomatillos really well. I'm gonna cut these tomatoes. It's just, just a really basic sauce. For every tomato is four tomatillos, so you know, I got 16 tomatillos in there. So now I'm putting the, a little bit of olive oil in the pan, and I'm gonna roast these chilies off. So I'm gonna roast the dry stuff off and then add on the vegetables and stuff. The cuajillo, arbol, and pasilla. These are pretty basic ones. These are ones you can find, at, at least here in California, they're pretty easy to find like any Ralph's, Whole Foods, Mexican places. I heated it up on high first, but then lowered it to medium. Cause all I want to do is just get a little bit of color on it. I don't want to, I don't want to burn it, you know? And then the other stuff. And this is the sesame, pumpkin, and allspice. So after this one's going for a while, you can smell like the aromatic stuff starting to come out. Now I'm going to add water to it. I'd say about a cup and a half. It's just enough to get the, the tomatoes started and tomatillos without burning them. So in this we'll just cook for about, I'd say about 10 minutes, so it's all nice and soft, and then we'll puree it. So now I just hit it with some salt, and let this bad boy cook down for a little bit, and then I'm gonna grab the cheese and portion out the cheese. So this is a Monterey Jack, California standard Monterey Jack cheese. So you wanna cut it into pieces that are big enough for the tamale. And I don't like to skimp on it, because a lot of people, when you get it from places, when you get your tamales, or you can barely taste the cheese, so I like to put a nice little fat slice, I'd say about this much. So now we'll check on the sauce. You just wanna get it, make sure it's all even. And then once you see the tomatillos change colors, tomatoes get soft, it's ready to go. It's, it's actually pretty, it's a very simple sauce. Seasoning's good. And then we'll adjust once we start blending it. So you can start to see that these tomatillos are changing color. I don't like to go too long because I don't like that really, really long, over-reduced kind of flavor. I like it a little bit brighter in my, in my experience. This one's almost ready. Squash is done. Oh, this thing's gonna be fucking smoking hot. You can see it's still bubbling. There you go. Any chef that says don't use a microwave can go fuck himself. So this one I'm gonna let it cool a little bit. Sauce looks about ready. We're gonna pull that salsa out, puree that. See, it looks all nice and soft. Skin separating from tomatoes. So this one's ready to go. So this, you're gonna leave everything in there. The bay leaves, the allspice, everything goes in. So on this one, we'll start low and then go high. This sauce is excellent on eggs too. You don't need to use it just for tamales. You can see the consistency on that. It's got nice, nice, nice texture. I don't know if it has a name necessarily, but um, I didn't invent it myself. I've learned this from just kind of from my aunts. So now we got most of our mise en place ready. Just need to cut this one. So on the squash, I want a good amount too, about the same size as the, as the cheese. Now I'm gonna assemble these. There's a couple schools of thought on the tamales and how you should wrap them. I, I just go simple and I just use the corn husk. Some people use wax paper, but I just keep it simple. 
So you want to drain the majority of the water out of it. Grab about, I'd say about a spoon. So I do about one and a half of this. Masa is basically, it's uh, corn. It's all corn. Made really good masa is very hard to find. If you're in LA, it's not that hard. You just go over to Boyle Heights and there's like 15 different shops on Cesar Chavez. But if you're not, these are the ones that I make for myself. I don't really do anything fancy. I just make, make them taste good. You can find masa at pretty much any Mexican or Latino market. And then uh, I use this little spatula. This is from a craft store I got maybe 11 years ago. It's like a, just like a little spatula. It's got little edges. Something simple. You can use a spoon. You can use a couple different things, but this has always been easy. It's just, just like that. You don't want it too thin because if it's too thin, they'll overcook and get gummy, like, like dry and almost like, like a stale chip. So you want a good amount, but you want too much. You put too much masa, it's fucking gross because it's just like, it's just masa. So now that they're at this stage, we're gonna add the filling. Just assemble. A nice wedge of that. At this point, I'm just gonna put a little sauce. If it's a little messy, it's all right. Just want a little bit to coat like the same amount as your stuffing. I mean, you can see it's pretty evenly spread. Just gonna fold once over, give it a little, a little pinch, another one, and then this, is gonna, this other side's gonna work as a glue. So then you give it a pinch at the tip, squeeze, and you can see the masa go into the tip. Just fold, that's it. If you had friends over, one person's on masa, another person's on stuffy, another person's on folding, and then uh, it makes it go away faster. And then we start stacking. You wanna have a steamer, or you can even use like a wonton basket, any kind of basket that you can steam with. If you don't have a, a grate, put this down. You grab a plate, put the plate in the middle, then you layer just leaves around, and then you, you would start assembling your tamales, and I'll start doing that right now. So since we're not gonna do too many, I'll put a little bit of corn right here so they don't float around. Not too tight and not too loose because you want them to be standing at attention. So you put water, you fill it however high your grate is, fill it right under that because you want to steam it on high or else your tamales will take four hours to cook and they should not take four hours to cook. You can see how deep the water is. It's just below the grate. So you get a kitchen towel, you wet it really, really good and you put this on top. It's gonna to help it uh, incubate that steam. So once you got your tamales going, nice and tight with the plastic wrap. The better seal that you have on it, the better it's gonna steam. When you do large batches of tamales, you're gonna to have to fill it up with water a second time because it's just too many. But this small amount shouldn't require it. Now we're gonna start it on high and just lower it to about medium high. You don't want it too, too high because if it does run out of water, you don't want to burn it or else you're, it's gonna, all that work's gonna go to shit. Check it in about 45 minutes and then it should be done. This is kind of a riff on tamales that my aunt would make. She used to make them with uh, jack cheese and uh, chile de rajas. So like just uh, roasted Anaheim chilies peeled, which were fucking awesome. And I just play with it. So these will change all the time too. And it comes out excellent. So now we're gonna see if these are ready. He's been cooking for about 45 minutes, 50 minutes, give or take. Yeah, you gotta be very careful. It's super fucking hot. Let's see if it's ready. So here you have it, the finished product. It's uh, the squash tamale, and a little bit of uh, sesame salsa. You can see the texture on that, nice and fluffy. Oh, you're a fucking bomb. It smells so good.